Hello, once again, welcome to Creating a Showcase. I'm Dr. Patricia Dickinson. In this video, we're gonna go over the steps that you need to take to create a showcase. In the earlier video, we talked about what a showcase is and what the requirements are. Now, we're gonna get into the technical aspects to help you get started. Step one in creating a showcase is select a platform to showcase your work. A platform is a virtual space where other people can access your work and see what you've achieved. This is where you're going to show your evidence of learning to future employers, peers, colleagues, and instructors in the teaching program. Here are my recommendations for web publishing tools. All of these links you can click on and it will take you right to the site. These tools are free. They don't require any cost. They will give you a URL where you can share your work for other people to view, as well as comment. Now we're gonna talk about some of these different platforms. The first is blogging platforms. Blogging tools are very flexible and dynamic. Some of the features of blogging tools is that you can embed a presentation, you can embed a YouTube video, you can share documents, you can include other web tools in these blogging tools like a Prezi or a PowerPoint. Blogging tools are highly functional and they, are, they enable you to integrate other web tools into your work. Presentation platforms. This is more traditional ways of sharing information. A Prezi is a cloud-based PowerPoint presentation that allows you to have several slides where you can share your work. Prezi's do not allow you to give comments to each other, so that's kind of a downside. Google Slides is what I'm using right now. As I showed you in the earlier video, you can get a URL for your Google Slide. You can also add comments for other people to give you feedback. Finally, a YouTube channel. YouTube channels allow you to create a series of videos that you can share. If you like public speaking, you feel comfortable um, articulating your ideas clearly, then a YouTube channel might be the way to go. Other tools include bulletin board platforms. Many of you are probably already familiar with Pinterest. Pinterest is kind of like a bulletin board where you can post links with, that are pictures about different topics. We'll look at an example later. A similar tool is Padlet. And finally, if you like the look of sites like LinkedIn or Facebook, you might want to go with a portfolio platform such as Portfolium and Carbonate. Again, all of these tools are free. There's many videos on the internet that you can use and on these sites that will show you how to get started. So let's go a little bit deeper. This is an example of a Padlet. I'm sure in some of your classes you're already using platform Padlet as a tool. As you can see here, this is an example of a science teacher who has shared many lessons and ideas for um, creating interaction with her science. So it's all about different ways to teach science. And this is a wonderful site. So you can see, um, once you get on the Padlet, it will give you a URL. You can create different posts, kind of like stickies, or if you are familiar with, um, if you like stickies like these, then Padlet, Padlet is very similar to that approach. So you can basically add videos, you can add images, you can add text, and they'll all be hyperlinked on your little sticky. Next is blogging. Here's my blog. I've been blogging for quite some time. I love using Blogger. It's super simple. It gives me a lot of flexibility. As you can see, I've added a QR code on this site. I've added a um, HTML box for people to sign up. And then I've organized all of my blog posts by labels so that it's easily searchable for other people. Blogging, again, allows you to include videos, images, and text. It also allows other people to comment on your posts. Here's an example of Portfolium. Again, it's similar to LinkedIn or Facebook. You can share your resume, you can share evidence that might be um, presentations or videos that you've created. Um, 
This is a great way to showcase your skills and connect with other people in a professional setting. All right, so we talked about a few different tools. Definitely go and start exploring. Step two is to create evidence to share. Remember, your evidence are your products of learning that might include papers, lessons, or a video that you use to show what you know. And you'll be showing what you know in your courses because your courses have assignments, and these assignments you can use in your showcase. All right, so there's lots of great ways to show what you know. I'm doing a YouTube video right now with a free tool called Screencastify. So you can click on that, you can add that to your Google Chrome, or you can just click on a tool like Screen Screencast-O-Matic and it will video record your desktop and even include a cute little image of you at the bottom. And then you can talk and you can go over a presentation that you created. So those are some examples of video capturing recordings. YouTube also offers that functionality. Presentation tools, right now we're doing Google Slides, there's a lot of functionality. You can embed videos, you can add images, you can include text. SlideShare is another tool that allows you to create presentations. Prezi is a lot of fun if you like um, presentation tools that are, you know, navigating all over the place and including some really cool templates that just break up some autonomy of traditional presentations. Powtoons has a lot of images and animation. Then you have other tools like Sway and Keynote. Sway is from Microsoft Office. Keynote if you're Apple users. And then iMovie. Graphics and images. All right, so if you like visuals and images and you wanna create dynamic ways for you to show what you know, you can use some of these tools. Adobe Spark is a tool where you take videos and you take pictures and then you add titles, and then you can just do a voiceover of your presentation. This is great if you're doing science experiments and you wanna take pictures of what the kids are doing, or maybe you're exploring the aquarium and you wanna take pictures of some animals there and then go back to your class and show this really cool um, digital story that you've created and have students answer questions. Educreations is another tool, think of Khan Academy, where you're demonstrating something and then you're creating this as video that you are sharing with your students and adding comments. Animoto is another tool in Canva. If you want a list of more extensive EdTech tools, click on this link right here where it says URLs. Okay, and finally, step three is organizing evidence. This is how you're gonna house all the information. So remember, every, every one of your courses, you're gonna be creating some, some um, products of learning. So you want to make sure that you're saving that in a space where you own it. Don't leave it in the shell because the shell is not going to be there. So make sure that you're creating a copy of everything that you're doing and saving it either in one of these cloud-based platforms that I'm going to show you. So here's some examples. Um, obviously I'm using Google Slides right now, so I have a Google Drive account. Evernote is another cloud-based tool that will allow you to clip information from the web and save it into a, online folders. Symbaloo allows you to organize all of your um, web tech tools in one space. Microsoft users will love OneDrive. It's similar to Google Drive. And finally, uh, Dropbox, which allows you to share and store information, including videos, text, documents, all in a cloud-based folder space. Here's an example of Google Drive. So if you're, again, we wanna make sure that we're aligning it to our TPEs because we need to show evidence of all six TPEs. So I just created a TPE folder for each one. All right, so that is all about the three steps. Next, we're gonna talk about knowing the TPEs and I'm gonna go over some additional uh, strategies for your portfolio. So stay tuned for our final